Alright guys, it's Trybox Reviews, coming at you guys with The Walking Dead, Season 8, Episode 6, Review. So, I thought this week's episode uh, was a little bit different, we uh, slowed down the pace a little bit from the first five episodes, um, and yeah, I mean, I... I I enjoyed it. I mean, it wasn't my favorite episode, that's for sure. Um, uh, but I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't mind it at all. I thought last week's episode was better um, than this one. Just, you know, seeing that whole Negan and, uh, you know, Negan and the Sanctuary and all that behind the scenes, sort of, of what was going on with our main survivors. I thought that was a necessary episode, and I thought, you know, they did it really well. Um, and a lot of questions raised in the last episode that weren't answered in this one. You know, whoop de doo right? <laughs> you know, this season has been, uh, you know, very good with that. Um... But yeah, I did enjoy it, and you know, it's not like it wasn't, you know, it, it was like a bad episode, I don't think so, uh, but yeah, definitely last week was better, um, and there were some negatives for uh, for this episode as well, um, in general, so uh, yeah, so I'm gonna do um, my review, of course, for this episode, and then I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, the crossover announcement, the worlds collide, or whatever, like that with Fear and The, and the Walking Dead, I'm gonna talk like just a little bit about that at the end, about um, that announcement, um, and I won't spoil it now, so if you haven't heard Please, you know, I don't even know where it would be released. It was on Talking Dead, so probably AMC has it, or just literally search it up on Google and it'll come up. Um, but yeah, so anyways, uh, and this week I'm going to change it up a little bit. Um, instead of doing sort of like a chronological recap, I'm just going to kind of touch on the main things that kind of, you know, got to me, you know, or, or got me, you know, to, to think a little bit more, to expand on those. Um, and then, you know, of course, say rating, fair character, and some overall thoughts of the episode. Alright, so I won't be following chronological order with this, just, you know, kind of jumping around here and, and talking about stuff, uh, which is a little bit, you know, under the usual, but uh, for this week, that's what I've, you know, kind of decided to do. Um, and also why I kind of decided to do this was this episode was kind of slow, right? There wasn't a lot of action, like, last week, and there's not necessary last week but you know in the weeks past the beginning of the season was a lot of action a lot of you know really fast paced stuff and uh now we've kind of slowed it down in this episode so that's another reason why uh first thing though is carol and ezekiel um excuse me the scene where they finally actually you know end up meeting and carol is able to you know come into the uh to the theater i guess where ezekiel is um was very strong i mean very emotional on so many levels um one seeing ezekiel holding the chain still, and Shiva not being on the end of it, as she's dead, um, that was, you know, a very emotional moment just to see that, and that was, you know, kind of not emphasized, but you could definitely, you know, tell, you could see that, um, and then also, I thought it was great how they related back to Carol's past about, you know, playing a character, you know, uh, pretending to be someone that you're not, and stuff like that, I thought that was really powerful, um, with her whole story that we know, um, and I feel like we tend to forget about, you know, what, what has happened to her, and, like, where she's come, like, during this scene, I was, like, you know, kind of thinking about her past a little bit more, and, and about, you know, her husband beating her, and, and her, her daughter dying, you know, Sophia, so, um, and I don't know, for me, I just tend to kind of forget that stuff, and, and scenes like this really bring that out, and, uh, and really, you know, make us think a little bit more, but I really, really enjoyed this scene, I thought it was one of the best, um, Carol, you know, is, is crying, and then also, they confront the elephant in the room, sort of thing, um, when, you know, Carol says, well, why did you come and check on me all those times at, at the house, or whatever, and I'm like, okay, right, you know, because I think as he has feelings for her, I think she does to him, too, to be honest, um, so we'll have to see where that goes, but I like that they finally confronted that, um, and kind of, were like, kind of trying to answer those questions, um, because I think we all have them, right, we're all kind of wondering what exactly was going on between them, and then hearing Ezekiel say, you know, um, you know, you're, you're the best person, you know, or you're the only person I can, you know, kind of, you know, be real with, or whatever, and I thought that was really important too, and that is kind of setting up, you know, maybe that they'll be together, I don't know, uh, we'll have to see, but, um, but yeah, no, I thought it was a really powerful scene, really enjoyed it, and I thought it was probably the best one in this episode, for sure, this week, um, so yeah, really, really powerful there, um, and I like that she was determined, too, that she, she almost, like, shot down the door, too, and then, you know, Jerry says, it's unlocked, or whatever, that was kind of funny, uh, I love Jerry there, still standing, supporting his king, even though, you know, Ezekiel is basically, told him, you know, I'm not your king, you can, you know, do whatever, you're not, you know, you're not responsible for me or whatever anymore, but 
He's still standing there at his post and, uh, and you know, kind of caring for his king, as he says. So, um, yeah, that was really, uh, really cool as well. So then we get Rick, and I don't really, I, I'm not totally on board with this idea, but yeah, basically at the end of the episode there, we see Rick is naked, fully naked, and uh, locked in a storage crate with the junkyard group at the, uh, I'm not exactly sure where their, where their place is called, like we have the Sanctuary, Alexandria, Hilltop, and all that, I'm not exactly sure what they're called, um, I mean... I guess maybe just the dump or the garbage dump. I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, so we, that's that's how we see him there, uh, naked in that storage crate. So I don't know. Like, did it? Did this? You know, to me personally, it was like nostalgia from like seeing Daryl naked at the sanctuary a little bit. Um, of course, Rick. You know, we're not seeing him getting tortured or anything. Um, but it kind of was on that same level. Uh, but I think it's something like weird with Jadis, right? Because I think she, you know, has a thing for him and she's a really, you know, kind of off. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if she was the one who kind of, you know, like ordered him to do that. Um, just cause she wanted to see him naked or something. I don't know. Um, so I feel like that was kind of weird. Um, but anyways, so we see him locked in a storage crate, but this happened because he goes to the junkyard group and and ask them for a new deal to, you know, to work with them. He proposes a new deal and, you know, says that, you know, we're going to defeat Negan with, it, with or without you. You may as well be on the winning side because if you're not, we're going to come back and basically annihilate you guys and, and you'll all be dead. Um, and Jesus, Jada says no. Uh, and the, and the guy says, you know, he talks too much. I thought that was kind of funny too. Um, you know, cause the, the junkyard group are, you know, they don't usually talk much. They kind of say yes, no, not much more. Right. So, and then Rick's doing this whole big speech, like he always does to our survivors showing pictures and all that. Um, and we also see then of course, why he's taking those pictures. We see, you know, finally a use for them. And, um, yeah, so I just thought, uh, I just thought, you know, it's not smart of Jadis to say no, but I knew she would, right, you know, but um, at this point, I really just want to see Rick and the survivors come back later in season eight, I don't think we'll see it in mid-season, but later in season eight, and just light all these junkyard group guys up, um, honestly, like, I, I would be perfectly fine with it, they're not working with you, they, tr they've been traitors uh, against you, they worked with Negan, they've, you know, cut you out of deals, like, come on now, these people, you know, I, I wouldn't be totally fine at Rick and them just storm the, the uh, dump or whatever they are, where they are, and uh, just kind of, not like, not like, you know, killed them, you know, in, in a big group and all that, no, but I mean, just either making them, you know, work with you then, or, you know, holding them at gunpoint, scaring them or something like that, but they don't even seem to be scared at all either, so... I don't know what exactly is going to happen, but yeah, I just don't think he should have gone back anyways. Um, I don't think they can be trusted anymore. Even if Jadis would have said yes to this, I wouldn't have trusted her. Like, I, I don't know. I, and I saw a lot of this on, on the social media as well. I mean, like, why would he go back there? Like, a bunch of people were saying that, and they didn't agree either. So, and I'm kind of on that side too. I don't think he should have gone back. I don't think it was worth it. And now he's trapped, to, you know, trapped in the storage crate. Um, and obviously, he's going to have to wait till someone comes and gets him. I guess, I don't know, or, or maybe they'll let him go free, I don't know, um, but we'll have to see where that goes, so, uh, so hopefully, uh, we can, we can see that next episode, but probably not, to be honest, we'll probably see in episode eight, maybe, um, but yeah, so I just thought that was kind of a dumb thing for Rick to do, um, but I do get it, I mean, with them, they kind of be undefeatable uh, against the saviors, I would think, because just, you know, p you know, numbers, I guess the saviors still have the numbers, I think, at that point, I think it would be really close, though, um, because now that, that whole kingdom army was basically taken out, right? Um, so the numbers are pretty low there. So I think it'd be just about probably even with the junkyard group helping them. Um, but it's not worth it. I don't, I don't think it's, it's worth it at all. So we have Maggie, uh, deciding to keep the saviors, uh, instead of killing them or, you know, just, you know, le letting them go. Um, she decides to keep the saviors in a jail, uh, or sort of like a, like a pen, like a fenced in area there. Uh, but it's within the walls, not outside. So it's within the walls of the hilltop and they're in basically this jail. Um, so, I mean, I don't know. I, 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 I'm still, you know, a little bit off about this. Jesus, you know, he's kind of happy. He comes into the room then and, you know, thanks Maggie for what she's done and all that. But then I, I really appreciate this. She says, you know, I, you know, we're just going to keep them as a trading chip right, or a bargaining chip, because the saviors are going to take some of ours, and then when we want them back, we can give them, you know, these saviors, and we can make a trade, and I think that's really, really smart, I think that's just, like, totally something Maggie would think of and would do, um, really effective, 
good leadership qualities as well for kind of figuring this out. Um, and then importantly, she says, and nothing more. She doesn't want to save them. It's not about that. It's about solely having them for a bargaining chip. And she said then, if we win the war or something, or like we don't need them anymore, then we'll kill them. So, you know, obviously Jesus thinks, you know, she's doing one thing, but she's going in total other direction. Um, and it kind of just looks like that. And also, I, I mean, it kind of saves face for her with the people too. I mean, yeah, I, I bet some of the Hilltop, you know, guys, um, you know, the people, sorry, would, you know, would not want them there. But I think the majority of them, you know, would not want to see them all, you know, hanged or whatever like that. Um, so I thought that was an interesting decision. Um, I still don't agree with it. I think that they really should have put them down back at the satellite station. Um, but it's, it's kind of Jesus' call. Um, and, uh, you know, Maggie thought about this long and hard, and, and uh, they ended up doing it. And I like the way that they did it where, uh, you know, you heard them building a bunch of stuff, and everyone thought, you know, they're building the, the noose, you know, where, where, you know, to hang them on, um, you know, and, and putting these nooses up and everything. Uh, but it ended up just being a prison and she letting them live. So I thought that was kind of cool the way they did that. And then, of course, she throws Gregory in the uh, in the jail with them, uh, which was kind of funny. I mean, I don't know. Honestly, though, I, I know Gregory was a traitor um, on them and, you know, totally hung him out to dry with Negan in the first episode. And it's probably the fault for if Gabriel is, is about to die. It's probably his fault. But I don't know. I, I just, like, there's something likable about his character. Um, he adds a lot of comedy into it. And honestly, I don't see him as a threat. I mean, in episode one, like, what he tried to do, yeah, but he didn't accomplish anything. Like, he's literally, like, nobody really likes him. He's, you know, so, you know, scared and whatever. I don't think he really poses a threat, so I don't think he really need to be thrown in the jail. And at this point, I actually think he's making some good points. I agree with him at this point about the savior issue. I think they should be killed, and, you know, they shouldn't be dealt with. And the only reason I think that is, is because in the past they've been burned by this exact thing of keeping people alive, there, you know, and it always happens, you know, and we saw it with Morgan and the wolf in, um, uh, what episode was that? I think he kept him in JSS, and then one of the episodes, he, um, the wolf, you know, he kept him alive without people knowing, so, you know, and then that all kind of went to shit, I think that was No Way Out, um, or like the episode eight before that, but anyways, yeah, I mean, you just, like, that's an example right there, and there's lots of other examples, so, I just think it's, I think Gregory's right in this situation. I think they should have been kind of put down in the beginning. Uh, but now we have them in, you know, inside the hilltop walls. Um, and then also we're already seeing a negative effect of the decision. Um, as we see the long-haired savior, I got to get his name. I keep forgetting to, to search that up. But um, anyways, the long-haired savior that all the fans hate, I'm guessing. Um, I don't think I'm on the only one on that. Um, and the other man, these two are already devising plans to kill the hilltop people, and uh, he's already, you know, got a piece of wood, and he's kind of chipping away at his ties on his hands, so, you know, that's the way these people are, the saviors hate, you know, these people, they want to kill them, and uh, it's obviously not mutual, right, and that's, that's going to be a big problem, so I'll have to see what happens with those, and see if they may try to escape, something like that, it doesn't look like a very sturdy thing either, so it looks like they could probably escape if they really wanted to, uh, but anyways, we'll have to see that uh, in the future. So then we have the part in this episode uh, with Carl and Sadiq, new character uh, there, that we actually, we actually met him in season one for like a little brief moment there, um, and uh, yeah, so Carl then finally, uh, this episode, he kind of, you know, goes uh, trying to find him, and he ends up, he does find him in the forest there, um, and uh, he gives him some water, some food, and uh, this was great. I really love this part where he says, you know, I want to bring you back to my community or whatever. And he asks him the three questions. I thought that was awesome, man. We, we haven't heard those questions in a while. Like, it, I don't think we heard it all season seven, um, season six, maybe. Um, but yeah, we have not heard those questions in a while and uh, definitely not as frequent as we used to. Um, you know, how many how many walkers have you killed? How many people have you killed? Why? awesome stuff, right? I mean, those three questions just brings back a lot of memories, um, a lot of stuff, so really great, and that kind of goes back to, like, the Aaron and Daryl, like, recruiting days back then, so that's crazy, right? Um, so that was really cool how he asked him that. 
Um, and then Sadiq, uh, you know, was answering pretty truthfully. He almost had, you know, the exact number of walkers down, which was kind of, you know, uh, interesting. Uh, but he said, you know, he kills them for his mom or whatever. Um, so that was that was good. And I thought that was a that was a you know good little thing as well. Um, you know, lots of talk about sort of both their moms, really. Mainly Sadiq, you know, brought it up. But then Carl talks a, a little bit about Lori, obviously not by name, but you know. We get a little bit about Lori, and then Carl, you know, says, um, I think I think he said, like, my, you know, my mom said, you know, to, to be nice or something like that, to welcome, um, and that's why, you know, I want to bring you back or whatever. So, yeah, I thought that was really cool um, when they kind of bring up, like, old characters like that that are dead. Um, I just think that's kind of a, you know, you know, kind of paying homage to that sort of thing there. Um, but, yeah, I really liked it. And then, of course, we see the, the two kind of conquer group of walkers together, um, you know, and Carl's saying, you know, let, let's kill these. You know, hopefully their souls, you know, will then be, uh, you know, um, I, I forget what he said. Like, I think their, their souls will be, you know, uh, like pardoned or something like that, I guess. Um, so that's kind of like Sadiq's mom said, and he kind of believes in that. Um, so they, they do it, but it's a very dangerous moment. I mean, Carl almost gets bitten, like, three different times. Sadiq almost gets bitten, um, and he was really close. I mean, like, it was, like, really close on his shoulder there. Uh, but luckily, they both come out, um, unscathed. Well, not, not totally unscathed. And then Carl is, like, soaked in blood from that, you know, old animal carcass there. But, um, but yeah. So that was a good scene there. Already showing some chemistry between the two. Um, I did think it was a little bit cringe uh, what Carl, you know, was saying. Um, I think he was saying, you know, like, I, um, I'm in charge of you now or something or I care for you now. And I don't know. I just thought, like, you know, really, like, you're a little young for that. Sadiq's, like, older than you. That's kind of a weird thing. You're really not the leader of anything your dad is. I don't know, I just thought that line was kind of cringe, but the rest of the sequence with Sadiq and Carl was, was very effective, in my opinion, and I'm glad that we got a new character. We haven't had one in a while. Um, the last one who came, it kind of came along like this, I would say would probably be Heath. Um, I'm probably wrong. I, I mean, like, outside of the saviors, right, just survivors-wise. Uh, um, I'm probably wrong, to be honest, but uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I feel like I feel like Heath was one of the last ones, and uh, we haven't seen him in a while, so, um, of course, but, uh, yeah, so nice to see a new character on there, and I think the actor for him is doing great, he was on Talking Dead, um, you know, um, you know, for the episode after, and I like he was, you know, really, really great guy, so, uh, that's, that's, you know, a plus as well, so then we get the Rosita and Michonne part of the episode, so, I don't know. I thought this was the negative part of the episode. I thought this was the worst. Um, but there were some, you know, kind of positive parts of it. So, I thought it was a negative episode, a negative part of the episode. Um, uh, it was good to see them again, finally, right? I mean, we haven't seen them since, I think, what, episode one? We saw Rosita for a good total of ten seconds on screen. And we saw Michonne probably about a minute, minute and a half, I would give her max, in episode one. So, we haven't seen them since episode one. And we haven't seen, you know, like barely any of them even in episode one. So it's good to see them again. But I don't know. I just really didn't appreciate this whole sequence. I like the fact that, you know, the whole story kind of, you know, said like they have alarms going off in their head. You know, they just want to see the sanctuary because they've been, you know, cooped up and stuck in Alexandria, not able to go out. So they want to, you know, kind of go go against, you know, <laughs> leadership or whatever, kind of rebel and uh, and get out there and, and see what's going on outside, you know, and, and uh, you know, start to form that idea in their mind so that they know what's going on. So I like that, but I just didn't like what occurred afterwards. Um, so some bad parts about it. So I did like the scene where they, uh, they you know, obviously they find the saviors in that building there. Um, and that's another thing. So I like that scene that, you know, they stumbled upon these saviors. Thought it was pretty cool. Um, and the tennis ball, that was actually, you know, um, you know, very, uh, very effective there. I, I did like that. Um, but it was so predictable that they would come across something uh, because they didn't plan to go out. Like it was an unplanned, you know, excursion. So, of course, they're going to find something and be in danger. I don't know. It's just getting a little old at this point. I find like at least every like once every three episodes ish in the last like season, last half of season six. Uh, season seven and how like season eight is like two people are one of these like are one of the girls goes out uh, you know alone and then they you know something happens to them and they're in danger and then they get saved like I don't know just getting a little old I knew exactly what was going to happen I knew that they weren't going to make to the sanctuary um, by themselves and, and get to see what they want to see so I don't know it was just a little obvious there um, but in terms of the scene I mean, I, I like the part where uh, where um, Rosita grabs the rocket launcher and just, you know, shoots it at the guy. 
But I thought the effects for it were just, like, awful. Honestly, I'm going to say. I mean, I, I actually, the first time I thought they were really, really bad. Second time I watched it, I was like, okay, it looks a little bit better. But, like, that's so unrealistic. I mean, using a rocket launcher on one person. And if you actually watch it back like I did, I mean... Literally nothing is affected at all. Like, the ground is completely fine. Um, there's nothing, like, around him. It's literally just, like, the guy's ashes on the ground. And, I mean, like, really? You're launching a rocket launcher at a guy, and you don't, like, you think that he's just going to disappear and that nothing around is going to be, you know, touched. I mean, I don't know. I just thought the effects of that were really bad. This season, they've actually been doing a better job of that. Shiva looked really real this season, so they've been spending money on that. But, I mean, maybe they spent it all on Shiva already, and they just totally lost out because these effects were really bad. That kind of ruined that whole badass moment for Rosita. I'm like, that was sick, right? But, you know, it's not when it doesn't look real at all. So, that's just, you know, kind of my two cents with that one. And then also, I mean, Daryl and Tara just come out of nowhere in the garbage truck and save their asses completely. I mean, they lose this girl, of course, um, that gets in this truck now with the speakers. And now, you know, and if she gets out, I mean, this would just throw a big wrench into things. I mean, she could get the walkers away from the sanctuary and everybody could come out and this war is, you know, right back on and the survivors are probably going to lose. So it's actually a big thing that if the heat, if she got out, this would be a big thing, right? So obviously the fact that they lose her and that she gets out is a big thing. But then we have this moment where it's like she's just driving and then all of a sudden a garbage truck just comes by on the side and just, you know, nails her. And I'm like, really? Like, this isn't Walking Dead. Like, that's not how the show is. But I just find like a couple of things like that so far season eight have been like that. It's like, this isn't what Walking Dead has been. Like, why are they changing up all of a sudden? So I don't know. I, I feel like they're kind of just changing the show up a little bit and I'm not a huge fan of what they, you know what they're trying to do um but anyway so yeah I just thought I was like came out of nowhere like I, I we didn't even know Daryl and Tara were out of Alexandria and just like going around on the roads and and like why are they in a garbage truck like I don't know it's just so many random things at once and then the, the fact that they're in that exact location that they find them and then you know hit them so unrealistic. I mean, I, I just did not understand that at all. I'm, I was sitting there, I'm like, what the, like, what am I watching here? Like, what? How does that, you know, but whatever. It was cool. Yeah, it was badass to see Daryl and, you know, to ram into the car and, and help them save the day. And then they go to the sanctuary, of course, with the binoculars and see what's going on. Um, which is also cool for us viewers to kind of see a broader, you know, view of that as well. Um, but yeah, I just thought that was a really unrealistic part. Good seeing them again, but just not a well-done sequence, uh, in my opinion, at all. Um, and lastly, a good storyline here. Um, I, we kind of get a feeling of a moving on sort of storyline. Um, and the moving on is from what happened in basically episode one and a little bit after. So I, I, did, I was reading this thing, and it's like saying how so far we've covered about a day and a half. Um, of, you know, the first day was them storming the sanctuary, and then later that day was all the attacks and all that, so, you know, we're only, we've only covered about one and a half days, and we're at six episodes, we're at the sixth episode, so, I mean, I like the fact that, you know, they're kind of moving on, they're building to this mid-season finale, right, um, which is in two episodes, two episodes away, um, so they're building to that, they're kind of moving on from, you know, the really fast-paced action, the war, the shooting, and all that, um, and they're kind of, you know, trying to build something. We get that, you know, with Carol and Ezekiel, with Maggie. You know, we kind of get that idea throughout, the theme throughout, and especially with Sadiq and Carl, right? Him bringing, a, you know, a new member to the community. Um, but really, like, it took us five episodes to do that. Like, seriously, like, it took us episode one, episode two, episode three, episode four, and then five was kind of wrapping it up in the Sanctuary's point of view. But why does it take five episodes to get to this point where we can move on from the day and a half of action and war. Like, I don't know. I just think it's way too long. I think this could have been compacted in three episodes and I would have, you know, appreciated it just as much. But anyways, that is kind of uh, that. But I do appreciate the sort of moving on sort of, t uh, you know, stuff. Slowing it down a little bit uh, towards the end of the season here. And I bet they'll ramp it up probably for the mid-season finale once again. So anyways, now I'll get to my rating, some overall thoughts, and favorite character. All right, so in terms of rating for this episode, I'm going to give it a 4.2 out of 5. Um, so yeah, I did appreciate last episode a little bit better. Um, I like kind of wrapping up that kind of storyline there. 
<clears throat> sorry, with the Savior's point of view, um, I did like that, um, and I don't know, like, this this week's episode, yeah, it was kind of like slow pace, and it was meant to be, right, you know, we, we knew that it wasn't going to be too much action if you watched any of the previews and all that, um, in the title kind of too, Rick, the Widow, and the King, <laughs> it was kind of a, a cool title um, for this week as well, because, you know, we, we did see all those, you know, all three, and, and they all kind of had to, you know, uh, you know, played an important part in the episode, so, uh, yeah, I did, I did appreciate that as well, um, but yeah, so, yeah, that's just kind of my rating, I mean, it kind of, you know, it wasn't that bad, but it wasn't that good, the Rosita and Michonne part just kind of brought down that rating um, quite a bit, to be honest. I mean, that was probably the worst part of the episode, and the best part probably being Carol and Carol and Carol, Carol and Ezekiel uh, seen there at, in you know in the theater, and then also the parts with Carl and Sadiq that was very positive as well. And uh, to me, Carl hasn't been one of my favorite, <laughs> one of my most favorite characters lately. Um, so yeah, it was kind of cool to see you know him kind of socializing with Sadiq and kind of getting close there, building a relationship, uh, some chemistry maybe even. Um, because, you know, just recently he's just, you know, really been annoying me, kind of being the most annoying character in The Walking Dead, uh, but now he's kind of starting to redeem himself, I, I like what they're doing with the characters, so, um, yeah, and I think Chandler Riggs, honestly, like, I say this to a lot of my friends who watch the show too, but I just don't think he's the greatest actor, um, and, I, you know, that's kind of a consensus thing, like, I mean, it's not just me saying that, um, you know, people do know that he's, he's not that good of an actor, but it's just kind of how it plays out, right, you know, he, he was, you know, a pretty good, you know, kid actor, I guess, right, for, uh, you know, for how old he was, he was a pretty good actor back then, but now, I mean, he's a little bit older, you expect a little bit more from him, especially with what they're giving him, especially with last season, what they gave him, you know, going to the sanctuary and, you know, getting, you know, taken back by Negan and all that, that was quite a lot, you know, to give him, and a lot of screen time, um, and I just felt like, you know, it kind of showed, kind of, you know, exposed him a little bit, um, into, you know, that he's not really that good of an actor, um, which, I mean, is fine, because the rest of the cast is pretty damn good, um, all the time, but, you know, he just kind of, you know, comes out a little bit in, in times, but I thought this episode, he was actually pretty good, uh, with Sadiq, I thought it was a strong part of the episode, for sure, uh, so that's kind of my rating there, um, and, of course, you know, we're kind of moving towards the mid-season finale, like I said earlier, only two episodes left, um, then we're breaking for the mid-season, and then, uh, we'll be back in about February, you know, end of February, middle of February, so, um, yeah, so that'll be, uh, that'll be good, um, but yeah, you can definitely kind of sense that they are kind of moving on, uh, towards the mid-season finale, and I think something's big, something big is gonna happen, uh, comic book readers are kind of, you know, speculating right now, um, all the, you know, spoiler fans are all, you know, kind of getting, uh, getting excited for it, so I think it's gonna be a good one, um, as always, you know, all, all the mid-season finales and finales are, all, you know, always awesome, um, so hopefully uh, we'll get to see a little bit of that. Uh, um, you know, hopefully it'll be a, it'll, it'll be a good one this season. Favorite character for this one is going to be Carol, uh, played by Melissa McBride, of course. Um, and Melissa McBride, you know, she she's awesome. Um, she was on Talking Dead as well uh, after the episode, and I thought uh, she, she you know she was kind of funny on there um, too. Um, it's nice to see you know kind of some of the cast on Walking on Talking Dead. Sorry. Um, just to kind of see, you know, how they are outside of the show, and a lot of them are, like, literally, like, the exact, like, almost the same as what they play on TV, kind of, like, the same sort of persona and all that, so I think that's kind of cool sometimes, um, to kind of see them, you know, off screen, uh, or behind the scenes, I guess, sort of, you know, per se, um, so yeah, I thought, uh, I thought she did a great job this episode, and, and I really liked her and Ezekiel, that scene there, and how, you know, truthful she was being, how emotional that was, and she was actually crying there, so yeah, I just thought that was really powerful, and uh, I think she's, she is, she's getting a great storyline this season, I really liked what she had in episode four, um, some guy, um, and, uh, and I feel like, you know, she's really been, you know, back to the badass Carol that, you know, we've, we've, uh, kind of expected, um, in the last couple seasons, so, um, so yeah, definitely nice to see that again, and Melissa McBride, like I said, she's doing an amazing job, uh, with the character, as always, and, uh, yeah, she's, I don't know, she's one of those kind of, like, stagnant characters that kind of goes through a phase, you know, of, of, you know, kind of being, you know, calm, you know, doesn't want to, you know, get in any violence or anything like that, and then she turns to a badass again, she's strong, we see that again and again, and then we kind of see, you know, she doesn't want violence again, so she's kind of in this circle, she doesn't really go that far, um, the storylines are, you know, kind of, you know, I wouldn't say repetitive, but, you know, sort of the same type of stuff, um, so I would like maybe to even get her in a, in a bigger role, um, coming, but, uh, with so many characters, it's just impossible to do that, um, and that's why, you know, we haven't even seen that much of Rick this season, even, um, compared to, you know, a lot of the other characters, because, 
you know, it's just not enough time, not enough screen time for all these characters. So, anyways, that is that. And now I'll just quickly touch on the crossover announcement. So, spoilers ahead, of course, if you haven't heard, literally just Google it up. Say, is who's the Walking Dead crossover? It'll come up. Uh, but it is Morgan. So, Morgan is the guy that's crossing over from The Walking Dead to Fear the Walking Dead, Lainey James, the actor. Um, and I don't know, I, I feel I'm totally turned off by this. Uh, at first, I was like, you know, this is pretty cool. The crossover, like, is this going to bring some new fans to Fear the Walking Dead? Um, and personally, I will say, I do not watch Fear the Walking Dead. Um, I've honestly been tempted so many times, and I've watched the first episode, the pilot, and I just am not feeling it. Um, but Abby Debra, Debra Carey, I think is her name, or Debra M. Carey, um, she's great. I, I, I watched her in The 100, actually. She was great in that show. Um, but she would probably be the only reason I would kind of tune in at this point. Um, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm not a, kind of a fear fan. I don't really, I'm not kind of messing with that. Um, so, you know, I don't know. I thought it was a cool idea at first, but when they pick Morgan, I just don't really, I don't know. They're saying like that it'll be season one to season three, like where we missed him in that kind of, uh, that, you know, time. Uh, but I don't know. I just don't, I think Abraham would have been a better pick. Um, someone that's already dead in The Walking Dead. Like, that would make so much more sense because now they kind of have to write Morgan out now because he's going to be working on Fear the Walking Dead, and you can't he cannot really do both. I mean, both shows take a lot of time filming and all that, um, and a lot of, you know, just costumes and, you know, all the effects and stuff. So both shows are pretty big, big shows, and uh, for him to do both is pretty much impossible. Um, but yeah, I really think it should have been Abraham. I think that would have been a way better um, fan. I think the fans would have been a lot happier there. And I'm just seeing a lot of outcry from Morgan. Like, people just do not, you know, they don't think that he was the right pick. Um, although, I will say, Lenny James is a great actor. He will do great in Fear the Walking Dead. Um, but it's just, it's just it could have been Abraham or it could have been someone else that may have been a little bit better. Um, that's already been, you know, dead in The Walking Dead. So, anyways, that's just sort of my uh, opinion on that. Um, I know some people do like it, though, as well. I mean, I, I still like the idea of the crossover. I just don't think Morgan was, a, was the right character for it. So, anyways, and it's not really going to make me tune in The Fear of the Walking Dead any more than, than now. So, I don't know. That's just my uh, my point of view on that one. Uh, but anyways, that just about does it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you so much for the recent support on my videos. Really, really appreciate it, guys. I think we're almost at uh, 12,000 views, or we might be at it uh, now, which is, you know, absolutely crazy. I just announced 10,000, like, last week or a week and a half ago. Um, so really, really thankful for that, guys. Um, and, uh, yeah, I honestly can't believe how fast we're growing. Really awesome. So, uh, thank you so much for that. And, uh, yeah, two episodes left of The Walking Dead for this, you know, till the mid-season finale. Um, so hopefully, uh, there'll be some good ones. And, uh, for sure. Yeah. So, anyways, I'll see you next week for The Walking Dead Season 8, Episode 7.